Okay, uh, very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, what a pleasant evening to be here. I am Dr. Ranjita from uh, Asunta Secondary School, Petaling Jaya. Uh, my colleague, Ms. Noor Hayati Binti Momad Zin, who serves as a lecturer in UNICEL, and I are here for this Chardi Pertama series to share some insights and input on how to get high scores in the MUET writing paper. Okay, all right. First and foremost, I would like to welcome and thank you all for being here with us today. Before proceeding, I would like to extend my gratitude to Puan Nurin Binti Zakaria, Deputy Education Officer for the Learning Sector, Pataling Utama District Education Office, Miss Jerry and Puan Hilwana, the SISC Plus Officers, for this great opportunity given for our sharing. I would also like to thank Professor Dato Dr. Muhammad Rezwan Uthman, the Vice Chancellor of University Selangor or UNICEL and Associate Professor Dr. Asri Yulia, the Dean of the Faculty of Education and Social Sciences, UNICEL, for the guidance and invaluable support. I will be the first presenter for today and will discuss the tips and techniques to answer question one of the MUET writing paper. Okay, which without much uh, ado, let's kickstart. Okay, uh, so we will start with question one okay, of the MUET writing paper, okay. I'm sure you are uh, familiar with the new format, okay, which is the CFR, uh, Common European Framework of Reference, CFR format for the MUET writing question one, okay. No more dealing with the old format. So how do you answer the question one, which is uh, email or letter, okay. Let's look at the, uh, go into the format first, and then I will explain to you how you should go about writing the paper. Okay, I hope you're all ready. Okay, and uh, you'll get some uh, uh, insightful uh, ideas huh? how to work on it. All right. Okay, let's begin. Okay. All right. As you know, the writing paper, question one is about one hour, 15 minutes. Okay, so you will spend 25 minutes on answering the question one, okay, of your writing paper. All right. The total marks for your question one is 60 marks and the type of question, okay, that will be given in for the first part is either an email or letter, okay. And uh, I'm sure by now you are familiar, okay, uh, email or letter, okay. How do you uh, answer or write this question, okay. So number of words estimated about 100 words, okay, but you can go a bit more, okay, but not so much about it, okay. Uh, just 100, 120 words will do. All right. So let's see. Eh? Okay. I am going straight into um, a sample question. Okay. I've taken this question from the Palangi model test paper. Okay. Uh, this is just a model question. Okay. And le let's see eh? how, how do you actually address the question paper in the first place? Okay. Now bear in mind, eh? if you are given an email, okay, you should reply in the same manner. Okay. Uh, in the email format. Okay, you are given an email, so your reply must follow the email format. Okay, if you are given a letter, therefore your reply should follow the letter format. Okay, so uh, we have uh, started with email format. Okay, let's see. Okay, uh, if you are given an email, how do you answer this question? All right. Okay, this is a sample question. All right. So you see the format from, okay, there's an email address. Okay, a subject is given the English language holiday project. Okay, so let's go about it eh, one by one. Okay, hi, how are you? I, I hope you are enjoying the start of the semester break. These two weeks are a great time to catch up with rest and spend quality time with family and friends. Okay, this is how the email begins. Okay, and you ha have a note next to it, okay, which says yes. Okay, uh, so what are these notes eh, in blue? Okay, 
So these are the one that you are going to reply in the email. Okay, so let's look at the paper first. Okay, so you begin with, okay, how are you and goes on. And then the next paragraph, while you are enjoying yourself, do remember that I have asked you and your group members to do a project for this subject. You could interview someone in English and transcribe the interview. Or you could write an article about it. Which do you prefer? Okay. So you are requested to describe. Okay. The next paragraph says, I believe that uh, speaking to someone in the English language will help you to improve your communication skills. Do you agree? Okay. And you are required to answer. Yes, because. Okay. So but so keep an eye on the notes. Huh? What actually the note says. Okay. That because you should not be deviated. You, know, you, you should not be uh, off track. Okay. Uh, so be careful with the notes. All right. And uh, what else have you planned for this holiday? I heard that you and your classmates enjoy hiking. I do hope you will have a good time and always stay safe. Okay. And you are requested to tell. Tell. What, what should you tell? Okay. Uh, let's, let's see. If you have further inquiries, okay, uh, inquiries, okay, please ask, okay. Hope to hear from you soon, okay. Uh, this is a, a sample email that is given, for example, okay. All right. Now, when you reply the email uh, for a more level, okay, be very careful, okay. Uh, don't take it for granted. Don't don't um, put it. Uh, oh, it's so simple. It's just an email. That no. Okay, always bear in mind, uh, Muen, okay, it's an university English paper, okay, the standard is there, and you are a, um, a pre-university candidate, okay, so therefore, you must be very careful, okay, in your response, okay, in your language, okay, how do you actually reply an email, okay, so let's see, all right, I continue, okay, before I tell in depth, uh, let's go to the writing rights. This means these are the rules, okay? The rules that you should adhere. All right. First of all, if it is an email, please follow the email format, okay? Be careful with your format, okay? These are all accounted, okay? Uh, next, okay, your email address, okay? If you are given, uh, all right, uh, the email comes from uh, grace at hotmail.com, okay? When you reply, you should write your name okay we shouldn't be seeing again a grace okay why why it's the same name just create another name okay uh, so mention another name okay at yeah hotmail yahoo okay make sure you put the email address okay the format all right first of all uh, the format has to be carefully addressed now next one okay uh, the subject don't copy the same subject given in the question paper okay reword or rephrase it Okay, so uh, earlier, okay, the subject is English language holiday project. Okay, so when you reply your email, okay, you shouldn't be using the same title. It doesn't make sense. Okay, you are replying to the email. How can the same title be used? All right, so be careful on that. So, okay, so reply to the email accordingly. That means the title, all right, all right, the subject. Please reword or rephrase it. Don't copy word by word. All right. I hope you are uh, clear so far. All right. The salutation. All right. When you start an email. Okay. This is not so formal. Okay. So you may use salutation. Eh? Dear. Hi. Hello. All right. And uh, when you reply the email, you will answer all the four notes given. Okay. Next to the email. That is what you are requested to reply. So, when the note's given there, yes, dot, 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 okay, focus on answering yes, okay, describe, focus on describing, okay, uh, when, the, uh, when the note says yes, because, that means you are required to give a reason, focus on the reason, okay, tell Madam Grace, that means you are requested to tell something, to explain something, okay? So, be alert of the notes, okay? That's why I say, I don't take things for granted. It's, it's easy. It's not easy because you must be very careful uh, careful uh, with the notes, the subject that you should write, all right? Next thing is the paragraphing. Now, follow the order of the notes in blue, okay? Do not jumble up paragraphs, okay? You were given the first one, okay, yes. Second one, describe. Third, yes, because. Fourth, so when you answer 
your email, you must follow that order. Okay, uh, don't be carried away. Oh, the, the, the third paragraph is easy for me to write. So that one goes up first. And then, and then this one comes down. And then, so that is not organized. Okay, so when, when, when uh, as a teacher, when I read your uh, answer, I will be like, which is which now? Okay, uh, so that the organization, okay, the structure has to be followed carefully. Okay, I hope you can follow so far. All right, next one. Okay, and your email with positive remarks. Okay, bear in mind, okay, this is exam, all right, and when you write uh, an email for exam, okay, be careful with your language and your remarks. Okay, always positive, uh, positive vibes, okay, positive words, okay, uh, and these uh, aspects. Okay, uh, take note of all this. It, it may be very, um, uh, what do you call that? Uh, 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 timid or something, uh, petty things, you know, but uh, yeah, mat uh, small matters, uh, it matters, okay, but be careful, all right? So, uh, let's move on, okay? Now, this is a, a model answer, okay? A sample answer which I am showing you how to reply an uh, email properly, okay? The proper way to reply, okay? So, make sure when you write your email, your reply, there is, first of all, email address, okay, see, azrina at hotmail.com or yahoo, okay, up to you, okay, please write the address first, all right, and the subject, okay, see, you shall, you should not use the same subject, okay, be creative, okay, you are replying to Miss Madam Grace, okay, so she's asking you something, and when you reply, you shall not use the same title, but use your subject, okay, what, what are the updates you have done, all right, but stick to the uh, subject matter, don't, don't be away, okay, don't be away from the subject, okay, stick to, around it, but uh, don't uh, use word by word, uh, like copying it, you know, come up with your own subject, all right, and, uh, Dear, hi, hello, you choose which, uh, whichever you like. No problem, okay? And Madam Grace, okay, follow the name, the spelling, the the uh, punctuation carefully, okay? Uppercase, lowercase, all these uh, small things, uh, but please be careful, all right? Then you go, glad to hear from you, Madam, okay? So when you, when you reply an email, uh, you shall not jump straight to the issue, okay? All right. Uh, hi, Madam Grace. Okay. Uh, thank you for your email. Okay. Glad to receive your email. Uh, okay. There's some 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 uh, opening. Okay. Some opening remarks. And and bear in mind your when you are replying. Okay. This is an exam. Uh, always give positive, good remarks. Okay. Good use of word choice. All right. Uh, no negativity, please. All right. And yes, I am doing great. In fact, I'm having good time together with my family members at home, not forgetting to call and chat with my friends at times too. Okay, this is what you are replying, okay? Okay, I'll show you first the format, okay? I will show you first the, the reply and then I will explain to you how you should develop each paragraph, okay? Now see, yeah? uh, thank you for reminding about our English project, Madam Grace. We have planned to interview an ex uh, Air Force officer in our residential area who have sacrificed a lot for our country. A few of us will also interview a retired teacher, English teacher who have contributed significantly to our English, to our education system. We will transcribe the interviews for the bulletin project. Okay. All right. See ya. Back to the question. The first paragraph is asking you, how are you? Okay. I hope you're enjoying the start of the semester break. <coughs> These two weeks are a great time. Okay, and hope you're spending quality. Now, when you are supposed to answer yes, okay, so you must answer this entire question, okay? <coughs> Don't just give a one uh, one sentence, huh? just, just a one sentence answer, okay? So when you reply, okay, <coughs> excuse me, okay? So this is the entire paragraph. Yes. You see, when you reply, you must explain, yes, I'm doing great. I'm doing fine. Okay. Answering the first part. Okay. I hope you're enjoying the start of the semester. Yes. In fact, I'm having a good time. Okay. With my family, enjoying myself. Answer. Answer every part of it. Okay. These two weeks are a great time to catch up. Uh, how you spend your quality time. Not forgetting to call and chat with my friends and time. That means that uh, you are answering the entire paragraph. Okay. 
don't just look at the word yes and just give a one sentence. Uh, yes, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. Uh, you shouldn't sound like that. Okay. In in your uh, answer. Okay. That is not appropriate. Okay. Answer the whole thing. All right. And same thing. Okay. In the next paragraph. While you are enjoying yourself, do remember that I've asked you and your group members to do a project. Okay, you could interview someone in English, transcribe the interview, or, or you could write an article. Which do you prefer? Now, this is the question. Describe. Okay, that means you are going to explain. You are not going to describe only your choice. Uh, okay, uh, uh, I prefer this, blah, 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 blah. Okay, it doesn't work like that. Okay, see the uh, answer method. Huh? Thank you for reminding about our English project, Madam Grace. Okay, thank the person. You see? We have planned to interview an ex-Air Force officer in our residential area who have sacrificed a lot for country. That means you are explaining every part, okay, every part of the uh, sentence in the paragraph, okay. A few of us will also interview a retired English teacher who have contributed significantly to our education system. We will transcribe the interviews for the bulletin project. That means the entire paragraph you answer in the same manner, okay. Okay, I hope you can follow. All right, and this is the way to to reply an email. Okay, every part of the of the paragraph you must look and describe. Okay, don't just pick one idea and make it in one sentence. Okay, that means you are not answering the the paragraph. Okay, next one. Okay, same thing. All right, if you look at the third paragraph, uh, uh, previously it asks you. Okay. Uh, I believe that speaking to someone in the English language will help you to improve your communication skill. Do you agree? Yes, because. So you shall not answer. Yes, uh, I agree because uh, you, you, you are not going to answer an email in that way. Okay. So your reply should be, okay. Yes, I truly agree. Okay. I, I I wholeheartedly agree. I definitely agree. Okay. That speaking in the second language will improve my my communication ability and give confidence when voicing out my points of view. It helps build my vocabulary and enriches writing styles in order to catch listeners' attention. That means uh, you must justify your reason. Why do you agree? Okay, so give give some uh, concrete, okay, a, a pre-university student level answers. Okay, don't make a simplified sentence, okay, uh, just a one one sentence, okay, uh, which is, which is um, uh, not... Okay, fulfilling a, a CFR standard. Okay, uh, so you have to be careful in your in your explanation that you you shouldn't be too draggy. Okay, don't don't make lengthy expressions and lengthy uh, sentences, but to the point. But okay, but points are uh, points addresses the paragraph. Okay, each each uh, each sentence will will address the paragraph. Okay, uh, that's how you uh, you should write. Okay, same thing, the next paragraph. Uh, well, for this holiday, my friends and I have decided to go. So yeah, the, in, the, in the email, okay, you are asked, what else have you planned? Okay, uh, are you going hiking? Okay, I hope you have. Uh, so tell. So just tell, it doesn't mean one word. Okay, so you must tell, answering the entire paragraph. So you tell. Well, for this holiday, my friends and I have decided to go mountain climbing. Okay, uh, so explain why. Okay, we have not explored. Okay, it will be a, a perfect getaway from busy workloads. And okay, and we had to endure all these days. Okay, uh, don't worry, Madam Grace. We will ensure all safety measures are taken. Okay, before we start our mountain climbing activity. Uh, so this year, the idea is organized. Okay, answering one by uh, one, one part after one part. Okay, uh, so uh, it, there should be a flow. Okay, uh, you know, you know very well how to use linkers, okay, and all this you may use, okay, but please answer the paragraph, okay, and before you end your email, all right, uh, you can ask question, okay, Madam Grace, may I know when is the deadline for the submission of the English project, okay, uh, uh, ask any question relevant to the email, okay, answering the email, don't ask irrelevant questions, huh? okay, uh, so relevant to the email, and Close your email. I'm happy working on this project and have a good day, madam. Okay, see, I see, and this is the positive remark. Okay, okay, uh, so 
uh, uh, make it okay close your email with a positive vibration or, or remark okay uh, i'm truly happy uh, okay to share this project okay to be involved in this to be part of this project okay and have a great day uh, these are all language uh, this is where uh, we see okay uh, so uh, being a, a moet candidate okay you are able to use the language well and explain okay uh, so uh, then you close the email okay just like your name okay so this is how all right the format uh, and the way to reply okay the question one okay so um i hope i have um, explained the important the essential part of answering question one okay uh, so if there are any questions uh, um uh, okay uh, maybe it's a bit too fast okay any part of the question okay uh, i will try to explain to you again okay because we are worried of time eh? that's the reason okay um when the question asks about advice or going for holiday with friend it must use a formal email reply or just casual friend communication yeah of course okay uh i won't say it's a formal email okay uh, follow the format of an email all right but uh the language has to be uh properly worded okay uh, not not too casual all right because a, a email is a bit of free writing okay a kind of uh like a friendly conversation all right and we are not too rigid okay of your um of a standard way standard use of uh, words but it has to be uh, properly worded okay grammatically correct sent uh, sentence structure okay uh, that way all right uh, so um and bear in mind you are writing for exam okay so uh proper use of language okay of course a bit uh, uh, some casual is okay okay but not too free okay um other words uh, blue words provided in the exam or is it just given now for knowledge it is given in the question paper okay i have highlighted in blue okay in your question paper okay printed uh, black and white okay so you be careful looking at the notes and that is the one that you are going to answer so when you answer you don't answer a one sentence okay i have showed you the paragraphing okay explain read the entire paragraph answer every part of the paragraph carefully all right uh anything else that you want me to repeat uh, you find it a bit um, fast earlier okay because i also need to give space for my uh, co presenter so any other question which, which i don't address now i will address to you later okay is there a possibility that a formal letter question will come up um and if there is what is the format okay letter okay i am sure you are familiar with letter okay a lot of uh, reference books also have got uh, letter and before this okay uh, most students are familiar with letter format okay so look at the format in the question paper and how you reply a letter in the same manner okay your address okay the sender's address okay uh, the date salutation and explain in the order bear in mind you must uh, follow the order okay uh, acronyms uh, if possible um, try not okay i i'm not saying it is wrong but uh, if possible try it, uh, uh, better not okay uh, because this is testing your language okay and uh, testing your writing ability okay um, of course in gadgets is okay okay uh, exam okay so be careful all right uh, any other um, uh, questions you want me to take an answer okay all right so um i think uh, i have uh, helped you on the question one all right so anything you can post later we will try to help you again okay if it is too fast sorry okay because of time factor that's the reason okay so for the next slot uh, my colleague miss nor hayati binti mohammad zin 
will touch on uh, question two, okay, of the MUET writing paper. All right. So over to you, Miss Norhayati. Thank you. Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum and good afternoon. Um, it's nice to be here. Uh, welcome. Yeah, I see uh, a few uh, teachers. Yeah, hi. <laughs> okay, and I see a lot of uh, students from different schools. So I hope that this session would help you uh, in the coming um, MUET. I think the next MUET session will be on the 23rd of October, right? Okay, so we'll try and help you as much as possible uh, today. Um, if there's any question, definitely, you know, you could just put it uh, at the bottom there, then I think the admin will uh, keep the question and then we could answer it later on. Okay, so I will also like to highlight here, now I'm, I'm going to try and accommodate to all students, so there will be some part which I will translate in Bahasa Melayu as well, just to give some clearance and then you are allowed to ask questions in Bahasa Melayu, you shouldn't be any problem. The idea of this session is so that everyone uh, could learn and have a, a clearer idea of how to answer question uh, with the latest uh, MOET format, yeah? Okay, uh, let me just start off by introducing myself. Yeah, my name is Miss Yati. I am from University Selangor, yeah, Faculty of Education and Social Sciences. So basically today, I am going to cover the second question. Okay, so you have uh, listened to Dr. Ranjita on the, uh, regarding the first question, question one, which you will, um, will have to answer within 25 minutes. Okay, and the next 15 minutes, you will be answering question two. Okay, so what is in question two? Okay, let's just have a framework so that, you know, we you know what we're going to cover today. So the first part, I'm just going to give you some idea what is question two, uh, the overview, you know, uh, how many minutes you are, you are allowed to, uh, uh, you are given to complete task two and then i'm going to share you question two examples from previous moed yeah and then uh hopefully with that yeah we'll try and look at how or, or the approach of how you should be answering uh task two yeah so uh, the important thing here is that i would like to highlight yeah, a, a lot of teachers complain or tell me that their students lack of organization and uh, they did not um, plan yeah, in terms of timing. How long does it take to, to draft, uh, to write, to edit? Yeah? A lot of students just, just take their own sweet time and sometimes you spend so much, on, so much time on question two and sometimes you spend so much on question one and then you, know, you, you don't, uh, you're, you're not able to perform uh, well or you don't really able to, to write well. Yeah? So as Dr. Ranjita has mentioned just now, yeah, uh, writing is the most difficult task in, in MOET uh, because it cover all the, the other skills. Yeah? You need to read a lot in order for you to be able to answer questions. Uh, you need to be able to be organized. You need to have vocabulary uh, because your the type of vocabulary that you use will kind of like tell us, the, uh, the, the readers, uh, which level you are. Okay, I think you are familiar with the latest band for, for CIFA, right? So uh, you look at your band and then that will kind of tell you which level you are in, okay? Uh, and if we have time, uh, we'll have a, a short Q&A. So if there's any question, then I will try and help you there, okay? Okay, let's move on to the overview. Okay, let's look at question two. What is in question two? Okay, so question two is an extended writing where they give you uh, the question will ask you will give you a statement and they would ask for your opinion. Okay, now compared to question one, question one it is more structured uh, and there's a lot of actually guide guidance for you, yeah, so that you just have to answer to the uh, points given. 
But for question two, this is where we want to look or we will check your maturity uh, of how you answer question, um, how, you know, your, your point of view, uh, how you develop your points, yeah? So uh, this, this will need a lot of practice. A lot of students sit for this exam did not practice because you assume it's because the topic will be you know, different from time to time, then you, you just focal practicing. You need to learn to practice. You need to read a lot, yeah? Uh, try and see patterns, approach how you should answer opinion question or how to give, um, you know, uh, how to write discussion uh, ideas, yeah? Okay, so candidates are given 50 minutes and I'm telling you it is a very short time to write or to answer question two. Yeah, sometimes some students, good students, they, they um, get so excited and they spend so much time on writing question two. Yeah, uh, there are some students who spend so much time on question one and they realize, you know, they could not perform well in question two. So be very careful. Make sure that you time yourself. Okay, timing is everything here. Yeah, now a uh, question will require candidates to state their opinion. Yeah, a lot of students just discuss without stating uh, their stand. That is the problem with question two. You have to state very clearly whether you agree, you disagree, or partially agree with the statement. Okay, if you don't write your stand, then we will have to pull down your band. Okay, or you will get lower marks because we are not sure where you, you, you know, wh wh where is your stand and where is the direction of your essay, okay? So make sure that you decide that. The first five minutes, you have to decide where is your stand, okay? Now, uh, let's look at what does the students or candidates you need to fulfill when you are uh, answering question two. Number one is that you need to present a solution to a problem. So most of the time, the statement is a problem. So you will need to state your stand, yeah? Compare and contrast the opinion given. If you are partially agree, you know, you are either here or there, you know, you're on the fence, you are allowed to do so, yeah? So you will need to discuss uh, both sides, okay? You have to justify your opinion. Now, compared to the old format, in the old format for MOET, uh, students need to write 350 words. But with the new format, what we want is only at least 250 words. Okay, at least 250 words. You need to fulfill at least 250 words. Yeah? Okay, so 250 words within 15 minutes. Now, I'm going to move to the next slide where I'm going to share you sample of previous question which you can get online or you can buy books here yeah, a uh, reference book you could see a uh, sample from previous uh, from from previous exam examination yeah more yeah so the uh, last session uh, okay uh, the first session you took 2021 now you will see this is uh, the latest format here yeah? during the teachers day celebration at school an invited speaker made the following statement in his speech. Traditional face-to-face -face classroom promotes better learning environment. Your teacher asks you and your classmates to write an essay expressing your opinion on this statement. Write at least 250 words. Okay, so just because okay that there, there's a lot of uh, er, uh, mistakes that has been made by by candidates yeah that session where they uh, they wrote a speech instead now this is not a speech if you look back at the instruction the teacher asks you and your classmate to write an essay expressing your opinion on the statement it is not a speech okay now so be very careful with the question. Read the question properly. Even those advanced students, even if you're a good student, there's a tendency where you get too excited, where you feel the topic is so easy, 
that you miss the real instruction. So read the instruction properly. Okay, so here we are looking at traditional face-to-face -face classroom. Traditional face-to-face, -face, I mean, you, you go to class, you meet your teacher face-to-face, -face, you have, you know, you do activity. Promote better. So it doesn't say that uh, it is bad or you promote better. That means it is better learning environment. Learning environment, not uh, comparing with uh, technology, yeah, a lot of students made that uh, that mistakes, yeah. So we are looking at promotes better learning environment. So look at the word carefully. What we want here is the learning environment, yeah. Not comparing two types of um, uh, technique here. Not traditional face to face classroom versus online classroom. We are not looking at that. We are looking at Traditional face-to-face -face classroom promotes better learning environment. So what is learning environment? So it's best for you to define, sit down and define first the topic. A lot of students just straight away, you know, start writing and that is where the problem starts. You know, you, you don't have a plan, then you misdefine things, you misunderstood the topic, the whole essay will go off tangent, okay? So look at this second uh, example. This is from previous years, yeah. Civic mindedness is an act of showing care towards the well-being of the community. That is actually um, a statement from the uh, from from a website, yeah. And the real question is civic mindedness, um, sorry, civic mindedness is lacking lacking in our society today. So that is the statement. Do you agree with the statement? Justify your stand by giving a relevant example. You should write at least 350 words. This is the old format, yeah, 350 words. Now we only need you to write 250 words. But remember, you only have 50 minutes. Okay. So if you look at the two sample, if you look at the uh, two question, you will realize that you would, they, they are asking for your opinion. They want you to, uh, to, to tell the reader, where is your stand? Okay. Do you agree? Do you disagree or partially agree? Okay. Clear, yeah? Okay. So how do you answer this question? Now, there are a few approaches, but mostly, yeah, you can do this two way. You can you can have argumentation or you can have a discussion. Okay, either way, again, you need to state your stand clearly, discuss and justify, and throughout the essay, the view must be sustained. Now, what does it mean by sustained? That means if you agree, that means all your point should back up your stand. Because sometimes, yeah, when we read, it get confused. You state you you agree, but later on, you know, you disagree, or sometimes you um because you don't plan, maybe, yeah, the the points become so confusing, yeah, and then uh what this is where we say there's inconsistent in, in inconsistency in terms of how you uh, deliver your uh, your stand and your essay. Okay, now a good essay should be able to convince a reader. That means when your reader read your paper and they are also agree with your point of view, maybe. Okay, they could say, oh yeah, it makes sense. Okay, now let's look at uh, what makes a good essay. This is very brief, yeah. So basically, um, uh, you know, uh, because we we have very limited time, we only have like uh, 50 minutes and you only have to write around 250 words. Um, I would always advise uh, my students to write maybe uh, or plan at least to have five paragraph. Okay, you should have an introduction. You, ha you should have uh, your body, two to three developed points, yeah. Uh, I would advise three, personally, I would advise three developed points. Then, you know, you have a very strong uh, essay and then you have a conclusion, okay? Okay, let's look at in good introduction. How do you write a good introduction? Remember, uh, your introduction can be in one paragraph. Yeah, introduce the topic. 
Yeah, some students would straight away jump to yes, I agree. No, I disagree. But what I would prefer, or you know, what I would always advise my students, uh, try to define first or to have a good introduction of the topic first. Look at the title, define the title. Uh, this will kind of ensure that uh, you know when the reader reads your essay, they would know how you define the, the, the topic. Okay, then you state your stand. Okay, once you have stated your stand, then write a thesis statement. What is a thesis statement? Thesis statement basically is uh, will tell you it's a statement, a, a sentence that will tell you. Uh, would tell the reader what are your main points what are the possible points that you will discuss in the coming paragraph okay so don't write too lengthy don't spend too much time on the introduction just make sure that it is uh you know clear cut clear very clear because remember timing is very important timing is very important okay and then continue with uh two to three well-developed points now, how do you define a well-developed point? Okay, one, you must have a topic sentence, that means your main idea. Then you elaborate on your main idea. You give example. You explain your example, yeah? And then you will try and have a linking sentence, yeah? So that you, when we read from one paragraph to another, there's, there's a continuity. The flow is there. Okay, you don't want to be jumping from one paragraph to another. Your reader will get confused. Yeah, so make sure that there's a transition, a nice transition moving from one paragraph to another. Okay, and the conclusion, the sum up of your discussion, you can summarize your point, you can restate your thesis statement. For example, again, I would like to agree with the statement given because and so on. Okay. You, you could have this is this is a basic uh what we call a uh, convention of writing that we have here yeah? so you you have a uh, five paragraph introduction two to three points and then your conclusion okay okay now so what are the common mistakes that candidates tend to do number one there is no stand yeah the stand is not clearly stated you define, you talk, yeah, uh, and th there are some students who like to to write uh, to to write stand implied stand. What, what does it mean by implied stand? Okay, it is not clearly stated. It's it's, uh, it's what we call as um, in Malay berbunga bunga belape. Okay, so we have to read thoroughly. Why I don't really encourage implied stand is because sometimes we don't uh, your your implied stand is not clear okay and you cannot assume that your reader has the same uh perspective as you do okay so you have to make sure your stand is clear number two your ideas are not uh, well organized your points are not well developed yeah your your when you don't organize your points sometimes you don't see the flow it become very jumpy from one paragraph to another and sometimes it will make the essay go confused yeah the reader will will have to reread a few times to get your points uh that's that that is not what you want okay when your reader have to reread a few times then it shows it's confusing a good essay would uh you know a good essay will make the reader understood I have a clear idea of what you what you want to convey by the first reading okay so just by reading the first time you know you the, the reader will say oh yes this is clear i understood mm -hmm. okay so you want that you need to organize and number four common mistake is the number of words okay number of words some students tend to write too long you get so excited with the topic. Oh, topic ni senang sangat. This is very easy. I have a lot of ideas. So you get so excited and then you tend to write so long. Now, the thing is that when you write too long, you tend to make a lot of mistakes. Yeah. And when you write too long, you take so much time, you don't have time to edit. Okay. And uh, when you don't have time to edit, then this is where we can see your careless mistake errors that you can avoid yeah 
so you need to have time to edit your work as well. So be very careful. Okay, uh, do we penalize if we, you write too short or, or too long? Okay, uh, if it's too short, then that there wouldn't be sufficient point. There wouldn't be enough points and definitely you won't get higher marks, okay? If it's too long, as I told you just now, you tend to make a lot of mistakes, okay? So uh, just write, you know, if they ask you around 250 words, Plus minus, you know, two hundred fifty to three hundred, it should be okay. Yeah, but don't 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 try and exceed three hundred fifty to five hundred words. You don't have enough time. Okay. Now, let's look at uh the uh, uh remember okay. So you need to plan fifteen minutes. Now I'm gonna go to the approach of how to write. Yeah, and you will see I'll have allocated time for each stage. Okay. So basically, there are four stage. Yeah, stage one, pre-writing, stage two, we're going to draft, and stage three, revising, and stage four, editing. Okay, so I'm going to see, now, in my slide, you will see the allocation time. Now, it's not like, you know, very rigid five minutes, it's just uh, give yourself plus minus five minutes, okay? Stage one, make sure that you consider your reader. Okay, uh, a lot of students, uh, a lot of candidates assume, uh, you know, they have the same idea as the reader. You, you, you cannot do that. Yeah, and remember who is your reader. Your reader are teachers. Okay, so make sure that you don't write, uh, you don't use acronyms because, uh, you know, maybe we have generation gap and we might not know that the, the latest acronyms. Yeah. Um, I don't use short forms, yeah. Uh, don't use your texting, make sure your punctuation, yeah. For example, your capitalization, yeah. Capital letter, uh, katana mahas, your proper noun, common noun, those are, are you know, things that can be avoided. So make sure that you, you sit down and have a clear idea who is your reader. Number two, I have informed this just now, make sure that you have a clear stand. Agree disagree or partially agree okay agree disagree or partially agree okay and then you brainstorm and gather your idea that means within these five minutes try and and do this try and write down now you you can ask papers you know, you can ask follow-up papers and anything you can just scribble out you know, or on your um your question paper just scribble out first yeah it is very important Practice this at home. You know, when look at question papers and try and read, yeah, you know, and write point. Yeah. You know? So this will give you a practice. Now, the next 10 minutes, this is where you draft. You know, remember just now you have your stand, you have your point. Now, remember when we talk about um your body just now, make sure that you have your topic sentence your elaboration, your example. So make sure that you have these five things when you do your drafting. Yeah, write down. Yeah, this this is very important. Within these 10 minutes, you must be able to, to write all this. Yeah, put 10 minutes, plus minus 10 minutes. Now, when I say time yourself, don't don't put an alarm and then you, you frighten the rest of your friends here in the in the exam hall. What I meant is that you, you could always you know, just check on the timing because sometimes you, you when you over spend time on certain stage then you need to to cover up all this yeah now make sure that you have a link sentences you know um if if you feel that you you have problem with transition uh you have to start learning or, or you know go and practice your your what are the words that you can use uh the transition words that you can use to move from one paragraph to another Okay, now spend around 10 minutes here. Okay, the next 25 minutes, this is where you start revising. Okay, this is where you write. This is where you will try and convince your reader. Look at the ideas again. Look at your draft just now, yeah? And, and identify areas or points that will need further defined or a, a better example maybe, yeah? Uh, why this is important because sometimes you have draft out and then you you kind of remember something else 
that you want to add in. So this is the time where you you do this day trip, revising, read your whole essay again, yeah, and reread again, yeah. Um, you have to find words. Uh, this is where you look for better words, yeah. Uh, sometimes you will see pattern. You tend to use certain words so many times. For example, the word and 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 so try and look for different words that can replace that for example as well as uh you know a different transition maybe uh a, a different you know there are many ways to 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 make the sentence better and it doesn't look like um uh you know uh, what we call uh very rigid or, or too too simple okay you don't want that yeah, so you can expand some sentences, you can add in some ideas, uh, and, and sometimes this is where you even have to rewrite the whole paragraph. Maybe when you reread and you realize, you know what, this idea it is uh, contradicting with my stand. Okay, so it is important for you to spend you know, 20 to 25 minutes here. Yeah, now the last 10 minutes start editing yeah check your grammar punctuation and your spelling okay now what if i accidentally exit you know in for example stage two i accidentally took uh, extra five minutes so you can take up from this editing you can minus five five minutes from here okay but i usually like to to ask my students to give no, at least 10 minutes because then you don't feel like you are rushing. Okay. This is why I always tell my students don't write too long because if you write too long, then you don't have the time to revise. Okay. Now, so stage three and stage four, that is the last two approach that we have. Yeah. Is there any question that you want to ask before we move on to, you know, to, to other things that you want to highlight? Is it necessary to count the numbers of words? Okay. Um, well, the, the readers can actually, uh, we can actually kind of like estimate, yeah, we can predict how many words uh, that you are writing. Yeah, uh, if it's very small, even if you write too long and you put spacing, we can actually guess how many words. Uh, it is not necessary, but you are helping the reader. You know, if you write, you, it doesn't have to be exact. If I wrote more than two, no, no, no. It will, your marks will not be deducted. It's just that there's we we see a pattern that if you write too long, there's a tendency to make uh, more mistakes, a lot of mistakes. So that is why we say you know try and fit it. Now another thing that you have to remember um, uh, when you sit for exam, yeah, you, know, you you might have preference. Yes, yeah, some of you might like to start with question one and some of you might like to start with question two. So if you start with question two and you, you know, you get so excited with the question and you think it's easy and you tend to spend and, and you, you write more than 250 words, that would definitely take your time from question one. OK, so uh, it is best for you to really stick to what we have requested. So 250 words to, to, to 300 should be okay. Should we need to write how many words? As I mentioned just now, it is not necessary, but you can you can write. That, that we're not penalized. We won't penalize you if, if you don't write number of words there. Yeah. It's just to, to give us some ideas how long is the essay. But don't 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 lie or don't you know pretend that the you know and say you write that only one page and then you write that 500 words. So that is quite impossible, okay? We can actually estimate how, how long you have written in your paper. Any other question that you want to ask? Should we use some idioms in the essay? You are allowed to use idioms, uh, uh, but make sure that you know the meaning of the idioms. Uh, uh, you know, uh, make sure that uh, it is in context. Yeah, 
uh, it is in context because uh, sometimes it, you you just simply put in idioms and you think you will get extra marks. You won't. Yeah, you won't. Uh, you will only get extra mark if the idioms and the essay go hand to hand. You know, the meaning is that the context is that it's okay. If I use phrases in Bahasa, should I bracket it off, try and find it in English? You Okay, if it's a proper noun, you are allowed to use uh, Bahasa Melayu. You can just put a bracket. It should be okay. You can put a, a, a bracket there. Yeah, uh, you, because uh, we understand there are certain things that uh, it is only, um, you know, uh, certain words that have a very specific term. For example, like, Gotong royong, ya. Uh, perkataan perkataan khas uh, tak apa. Kita boleh terima kalau you letak dalam bracket. Tak ada masalah. Is there any other question that you want to ask? Okay, there are some students. Uh, okay, there are one person asking, how do we know if we are writing a good essay? We are practicing. Okay. The, the thing is that the whole idea of practicing, yeah, why we ask you to practice, one is to make sure that you are prepared for the exam. Yeah. Uh, when you practice, then you will get kind of like um, the, the uh, idea how it will be on the exam day. Yeah. Uh, for example, like timing yourself, how many minutes, because sometimes you you will get points, but you tend to spend so much time yeah, writing down, drafting. So it's good to practice. It's, it's good for you to practice. Look at the words, look at transition, do activities on, on uh, transition words. Yeah, that, that, is, that is why we want you to practice. Uh, are we allowed to tear the paper and stick on the wrong part in case we want to cover what we have done wrong? Um, I don't think you have the time to tear paper and paste cut, yeah? So, uh, that is why I say it's important for you to draft. Uh, make sure that you plan your ideas well before you write down, yeah? But if not, you, you can ask for papers. Shouldn't be any problem. Yeah, shouldn't be any problem. But we don't we don't practice. We don't tell our students to to cut paper space. Guna guna gum tak ada. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, there are some students who write everything in one paragraph. We need to see your organization. Yeah. So we're gonna penalize in terms of organization. Yeah. If you write everything in one paragraph, is it okay? Can we can we see the question again? Is it okay to leave a few blank lines, three to four lines between paragraph in case I wanted to add more words? Okay, there, there is, uh, there's no, no problem in leaving a few blank lines uh, as long as the transition is clear. But, you know, sometimes, yeah, when we read, if there's blank, we tend to think there is something missing, right? Uh, so, please make sure that you plan first. Plan, plan, plan. The idea is to plan. Make sure that you plan. Okay. Okay, some student asked me, what if I write the essay in two languages? Mix it up. Okay, uh, it happens. Sometimes I see students writing in both languages. Uh, we definitely will penalize you in terms of language. Yeah. We would read. It's not that we don't read at all. We would read. I think you, we would try and understand your ideas there, but we would definitely pull down your, your language. Okay. Okay. Can I get high marks if my points are off tangent? Okay. What does it mean by off tangent? Off tangent means you go out of topic. Go out of topic, for example, like, okay, let's look at the question again, yeah? Let's look at the question again. Okay, traditional face-to-face -face classroom promotes better learning environment. Um, let's say in your essay, instead of talking about promoting better learning environment, you will say traditional face-to-face -face classroom uh, is better than uh, learning online. Okay, that is off tangent. That is off tangent. Off tangent means that is not what we want. That is not the statement that we give you. 
what we want here is traditional face-to-face -face classroom promotes better learning environment. In a better learning environment, maksudnya pembelajar apa ni? Uh, pembelajaran yang lebih baik. Okay, situasi uh, pembelajaran yang lebih baik. Okay, kalau kalau uh, pelajar menjawab, contohnya traditional face-to-face -face is better than learning online, then it is off tangent. So what happen if you are off tangent? Okay, apa akan jadi kalau pelajar menjawab soalan tak tidak menjawab soalan? Okay, uh, bila kita tak menjawab soalan, walaupun language tu uh, baik, yeah, even though your language is good, yeah, you will not get high marks because you have misunderstood the task. Okay, so uh, no, if you have gone off tangent, you will not get a band five. You would never, you will, you we will not give you that band. Yeah, we would pull down your band because you have misunderstood the task. When you have misunderstood the task, means you have misunderstood the language. Okay? Any other question? Further question that you you would like to elaborate? Now, don't worry. If you want to ask question in, in Malay, it's, it's okay. Yeah? We, we, I will still answer your question. Okay, if you're shy, okay, and if you have question to ask, uh, you could ask me at my email. You can send me an email, uh, my full name, norhayati at unicell.edu.my, uh, and I will try and help you as much as possible, okay? Uh, I'll try and then see what are the questions, what are the things that is not clear. Maybe you are too shy to ask uh, online, then, you know, yes, uh, there's another platform that you can ask, Okay. Is that okay with you guys? Okay, if there's no further question, uh, I hope that I have um, helped you with your question too. Yeah, uh, we did we, we did not go to details here yeah, because, uh, you know, this is a, a very short uh, time. We have a very short platform here. We only have around one hour uh, to, to help you with question one and question two. So this is just a general guideline to assist you to prepare you for your MUAT in the coming session. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm just going to return this back to Dr. Ranjita. Okay. Uh, thank you, Ms. Noor Hayati Binti Muhammad Zin for the valuable session. Okay. So students, uh, hope this session has helped you with the MUAT writing paper. All right. So now, we have come to the end of our session. All right. Now, please remember to fill the fill in the attendance link, okay, which will be shared in the chat box. Okay. So I once again thank the Pataling Utama Education Office and all wonderful people, including the technical team involved uh, in ensuring that this program, the Chardi Patama series, a success in helping pupils to gain better understanding of the topic discussed today. Last but not least, a big thank you to Madam Teresa Chan, the principal of Asunta Secondary School, Pataling Jaya, and Madam Sunita Sharma, the middle leader for languages, Asunta Secondary School, Pataling Jaya, for inspiring us teachers to take part in such a great series. Thank you, dear audience. Okay, and we both wish you all the best. Okay, stay safe. Thank you. <laughs>